As you guys know, frame generation has been the thing. Who? Oh! And the, it has been the thing, firstly, because FSR 3 frame generation was made available, and secondly, because games are getting more and more demanding, and developers are optimizing their games less and less nowadays. So, frame generation is kind of a clutch for some people, I believe that's how it's pronounced. And at the same time, we have several offers. We have FSR 3 frame generation, for example, we have NVIDIA's DLSS frame generation, but that one is only for the NVIDIA cards, and we have, for example, things like AFMF, which is the, um, the fluid motion frames from AMD, which is kind of um, a frame generation inside the drivers, which is also nice. And then we have something like AFMF that works for every game, which is uh, a pro of, uh, of the AFMF, but for every GPU available. And it is called lossless scaling. And lossless scaling is available on Steam, and you can buy it if you want to. I believe there's no trial version, but it isn't that expensive, it's like 10 bucks. And people have been asking me to test lossless scaling for months and months, and the reason I didn't do a video about it before was that I tested it some months ago with lossless frame generation, basically lossless scaling frame generation 1.1, and it wasn't that great, okay? But now they have the 2.1 version, which costs more FPS, more base frames, but at the same time, the overall quality of the frame generation is much better because by the time when I tested it, it was actually worse than AFMF and it costed more frames. And now we actually have a huge, huge quality increase with the 2.1 version and you actually have the option to, instead of doubling your frame rates, tripling it. And just before going to the testing, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG More. Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. As you can see, this is the lossless scaling application. You have the scaling mode. I believe that we can't actually do uh, scaling or custom scaling. Yeah, we can't go below one. Basically, all we can do is, in, in terms of scaling type, is use a different kind of anti-aliasing. If you want to use, for example, lossless scaling one, bicubic, sharp, bilinear, anime 4K, nearest neighbor, etc. But the interesting thing is the frame generation. So you have the, the option to have it off. Once again, 1.1, 2.1, and it is what it is, basically with several options like clip cursor, adjust cursor speed, height cursor, uh, rendering, you can enable actually vertical sync, HDR support. If you want lower input latency, you can also select allow tearing. It will allow tearing in some scenarios, which will decrease the visual, the visual fidelity, but at the same time, it will reduce the latency as well. Um, the draw FPS, you can actually uh, select the capture API, actually this one is the best, the DXGI, uh, capture only new frames, basically, then we have preferred GPU, blah blah blah, and VRR support, variable refresh rate support, which is one thing that we want. So, let's start with Alan Wake 2. Alan Wake 2 is a game that does not, does not support any kind of of a frame generation for AMD. You have the frame generation, of course, um, for NVIDIA and you have ray reconstruction and so on, but we all know that in some scenarios, in some games, we will never get frame generation from AMD because, once again, uh, those are NVIDIA sponsored titles, the same way that we don't have frame generation from NVIDIA in some because they are AMD sponsored titles. We're running 1440p with FSR2 set to quality and using high settings and, and post-processing quality set to high, which actually affects the FPS by a lot. So we're running at 66, 67 FPS. Once again, we're recording and the frame time that you see, the, the spiky-ish frame time that you see is because we're running, of course, um, uh, we're recording the, the desktop and that's why the frame pacing is completely messed up. So kind of ignore it if you can. And just before starting, let me tell you, for example, some of the pros and cons of lossless scaling. For example, the pros, it works with any game. Yes, lossless scaling works with any game that you want to put it in. The X11, the X12, it doesn't really matter. It works with the game. One thing, one con of that part is that you actually need to select the game as borderless because most times if you select full screen, well, it won't work as intended. So you need to select the borderless mode for it to kind of stick. Then we have better quality with, with lossless scaling frame generation 2.1. The quality increased a lot. 
And then we have the option that it works in all systems, AMD, Nvidia, and Intel GPUs. It just works. Doesn't really matter if you have a strong or slow GPU, it works. As for the cons, of course, we have a big FPS cost, your base FPS, imagine if we're having like 67 now, or 74, for example, the base frames will decrease a lot, let's say 10 or 15, but then it will double over those frames that you'll have in the end. Um, and of course, yes, we have latency increase. Now, all you have to do is basically you're running the game in borderless mode, you go to lossless scaling, you select the frame generation that you want, in this case 2.1, you go scale, and it will give you five seconds, you go to the game, and bam, it applied now. So as you see, the base frame rates decreased quite a lot to 64 from what we had, and it decreases even more if I'm not recording, but 63, but at the same time, we now have the frame generation enabled, and man, it just works much better. I believe that I have a little overlay here that you can't see on video. I'll be recording with my smartphone. Actually, I'll do it right now for you guys to see, and I'll pass it right now uh, on the screen. But we do have a little overlay that we can see uh, that shows actually the, the base frame rates that you have, 62, and then the, um, the 125 that we're having. So basically the, the doubled frame rates. You can see this, but it won't be appearing in video uh, unless I'm showing you right now like I'm doing with my smartphone. But yeah, it is what it is. As for the, the fluidity, yes, it is much, much better. I mean, and now we're having the, the fluidity of 120 FPS. It just is much better and even compared to AFMF to AMD fluid motion frames it doesn't disable itself when you're doing these fast movements it just works which is a which is a plus and believe me it is much better to play this game when using let's say 130 fps with lossless scaling frame generation than playing let's say at 70. some things you can't actually see on video but generally it just feels much better and plays much better you do have a bit more input latency of course but for a single a single player game and slow paced game like Alan Wake, the, the added input latency isn't really noticeable that much, at least that much. I mean, you can even go and you can go nuts and use, for example, three times and scale, scale back again. And now you have, let's say, 68, 69. As soon as the frame generation kicks in, you go down to 55, but you have triple the frame rate. So you are now having around 160 FPS. And it does feel even more fluid, but at the same time, we do have way more artifacts because we have like three. Yeah, even if we look at the grass, we can see more artifacts. It just doesn't work as well because you are actually creating two fake frames for each real frame and that doesn't work well in most scenarios. And now we have Hellblade 2 and this game is really really heavy as you know. We're using 1440p TSR, 75% of resolution scale, which is not, not that great with high settings as you can see, global preset, which is fine. And we are hovering around 55, 60 FPS in this, in this part, so the game is really heavy. We can do some tweaking here though. We can go, for example, to the global illumination part, I believe, yeah, global illumination quality, to medium, the FPS increase a lot, and then to the um, volumetrics, I believe. Yeah, now we have way better FPS, just setting these two settings to medium, and we have 71, 60 something, around the 70 FPS mark, which honestly is not that bad. Now going back, lossless scaling, scale two times. And remember, this is kind of crashing because it lacks information. As soon as the lossless scaling applies, we go down to 62 FPS, which is not optimal, obviously, but at the same time, it doubles the FPS to 123. And yeah, I mean, the difference is just insane. And I believe that in this game, it actually performs better in terms of quality than the previous one. I mean, it's just, such a big difference. Hellblade 2 is another game that does not support FSR 3 frame generation. I don't know, I, I don't really know why. It supports the NVIDIA frame generation, but it doesn't support FSR 3 frame generation. So we kind of have this, this option of using lossless scaling, and believe me, it works better than AFMF now with the 2.1 mode. And it's just so much more fluid. 
it's really worth it. If you ask me, it, it is really worth it. I mean, you lose some base frames, but at the same time, the quality of the frame generation is impressive. It is actually impressive if we take in consideration that lossless scaling doesn't have access to the game's motion vectors. And having the this final quality without having access to the motion vectors is actually very, very impressive. I mean, much more fluid than even 75, 80 FPS bays, and we're having like 55 bays, and it performs much better. And I mean, there are some things that you can't see on video, basically the fluidity, you can't see it um, in most scenarios, but I mean, just try it because it is much, much better. Two times, definitely an improvement. As soon as I try to use, for example, the three times one, well, that one won't work that well, because, yeah, definitely the frame generation was working much better. Now we went down to 48 base frames, 49, but at the same time we tripled uh, the frame rates to 146. And in terms of fluidity, it works well. We do have some more input latency. We have some... Yeah, we actually don't have, don't have many artifacts. We did have many artifacts in Alan Wake 2, but in this game it seems to work fine, which is actually impressive. Even tripled frame rates, <laughs> which is kind of a banger. It works decently well, up to 150 FPS. Once again, the latency is there. I can definitely no notice the latency. That's a given. But at the same time, it works decently well in this game, even with three times. And if you also like to play, for example, Pal World, which is also a heavy game, I mean, it's not the heaviest game around there, but it, it is still Unreal Engine 5, and the game is quite heavy, as you can see, running epic settings. And the only available option, you don't even have FSR upscaling, which is insane for a game in 2024 to not have any kind of FSR upscaling. We only have the LSS, which once again is insane, not even XCSS just the LSS. And that means that um, for some GPUs, the game will perform quite poorly. And all you have to do is once again, scale, wait for it to go. And from 60 to 120, it just feels like an entirely different experience. Way more latency, for sure. But at the same time, look at this. Just, yeah, just smooth with enough information, 120 FPS, just smooth as it should be. As soon as I disable the lossless scaling, it goes back to 70 FPS, and yeah, I can see it definitely crashing much more. I mean, it is way more sturdier than before. Way less input latency, for sure, but at the same time, a much less enjoyable experience. And the developers of lossless scaling made an amazing job here. You can use it with basically any game, any GPU. It does have input latency because it isn't inside the game. It is kind of uh, an outside software, so it is normal that it has latency, but it doesn't deactivate itself in fast pacing. It works really, really, really well in terms of quality. For example, even when aiming, you can see that uh, we have almost no artifacts here when moving the camera, and the game just feels much more fluid at 120 frames versus the 60 that we had before. I mean, it's a completely and entirely different experience. A much, much better one. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about Lossless Scale. Once again, in my opinion, developers made a huge work here. It works once again in every game. It does have input latency, but at the same time works in every game and works perfectly well. Now, I even tested it on my Nuke that I have there with a Ryzen 9 7940HS. By the way, thanks, Minis Forum for sending the, the nuke with a Radeon 780M and even in those scenarios we can notice a difference in um, in some cases. The FPS hit is bigger because the GPU is integrated graphics and it is much slower but overall we can still see an improvement in most scenarios and once again it is definitely there. If you ask me Lossless scaling is entirely worth it. In games like once again Pal World and some others where we don't have any kind of upscaling for most cards or any kind of frame generation support. Lossless scaling is a life savior for, for most people. Definitely improving the experience a lot in some scenarios. So 
Should you buy it or not? I believe so. It is definitely a thing that you should be looking into if you're looking for better smoothness. Not better performance per se, but definitely better smoothness. I must say I did regret buying it back then with the 1.1 version, but I do not regret buying it now with the 2.1 version. Ciao.